Hey guys, thank you for entering the chamber once again. UVS Games sent me out along with a lot of other really talented creators to attend a summit in Las Vegas to talk about the upcoming sets like Godzilla and Attack on Titan. And I want to share my thoughts about that summit briefly and what it means for the future of universes with you all today. I've spent some time thinking about what UBS Games presented to us and kind of what that means for the future. It was a major focus of the summit and you could really feel the anticipation and hope that the team at UBS Games had for universes and the community and people like you and I moving forward. Um, so it was a really powerful experience and I, I cannot thank them enough for letting me come out. So let's break the summit down kind of in a nutshell. Um, personally, I think it was great. Maybe not perfect, but definitely great. There's a lot of really good things I have to say about it. A couple of things I would like for them to maybe do better next time. Um, but I, overall, excellent experience. We got to talk with the heads of UBS Games, people like Paul Warshawski and Bill Stark. These are guys who absolutely love universes. Um, and it was great getting to talk to them like on a personal level as opposed to just seeing Bill Stark post about like mental load. And guys, I gotta tell you, the amount of work that they're putting in on Attack on Titan is insane. Like, I've played a lot of card games in my life, so I'm speaking from a, a somewhat seasoned perspective. A lot of the creative team efforts on Attack on Titan is some of the best stuff I have ever seen in any card game, bar none, period. Like, Zoe and Hitch should be over the moon proud of themselves for how, how incredible some of these cards look given that they're they were limited to working with just manga panels because i'm going to be honest when attack on titan got announced i was frankly really worried because all we got was the manga i thought it was going to look bad um so i'm very very happy to see that that's a one front i was just wrong on now outside of the art we also covered some of the upcoming changes that are going to happen with how the game is played um and i can't say anything right now because of ndas but there's a lot to unpack and the community reception is going to be very interesting but we're going to talk about that in just a little bit personally i think we're going to see some aot spotlight um probably in the near future when attack on titan drops both to push the new set and ip but also to kind of experiment with these new changes more or less in a bubble without the older cards kind of giving false data i think they're going to, want to test and see what these look like and just just on their own and use that as a, like a, a measuring stick for moving forward. Personally, I think the upcoming changes are excellent and they're going to age really well um, once people give them a shot. Outside of the time I got to spend with the upcoming card changes and getting to see some of the efforts of their creative team, I got to meet all of the other content creators that were at the summit. Um, and that was like a really powerful experience. Some of these guys are like the nicest, most affectionate and genuine people I've ever met in my life. It was an honor to be like listed among them. Special mention definitely has to go to Dan Green. Dan runs Main Deck, which is kind of like a variety YouTube channel for all sorts of card games. He's gonna start covering more universes actually because of his experience at today's, or not today's summit, but the summit from last week. Um, and I, I, man, if you watch this, it was such a pleasure to get to hang out with you and get to know you better. You were a great roommate. Um, I would I would absolutely spend another weekend with you anytime. Um, thank you for, for being so chill. I really appreciate you. And for this video, that's actually kind of all I'm gonna have on the summit. Um, the creative team, great work. The people at the company, really passionate. Uh, upcoming changes I think are great. We can talk more about them when you know this actually happens. Um, I know I didn't really say a whole lot, but that's because the focus of today's video isn't really about the summit. You can probably see there's still a lot of time left. You see, instead, I want to spend some time talking to you, the viewer, and kind of the community as a whole. See, the summit really focused heavily on the future of universes and how they can grow into being a much bigger game. We're the fourth oldest card game. We're the oldest niche card game by a mile after Pokemon, Magic, and Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything after that, like, we have them crushed. And we have a pretty small player base. And some people still haven't even really heard of us, which is wild. What do you think about the um, IPs that we have? And the people over at UVS Games are trying hard to change that. As Paul puts it, he wants universes to be the best card game on the market. And while they have some room to go before they get there, I believe in them and their ability to get there. And I mean that genuinely. 
That being said, for us to be the best card game on the market, we also have to have the best community. And that's kind of the crux of today's conversation. You see, I don't think we are. I know we like to say that we are, and I know people watching this are going to have a knee-jerk reaction, but please just hear me out. In some ways, we really are great. You know, there's people who will help teach new players, they provide cards, um, it's a very friendly community when it comes to, you know, people on the outside coming in. Um, there are some really genuine, awesome people here, and there's stuff that we should be proud of, and I don't want to take that away from any of us. It's clear that a lot of people in the community want this game to grow and foster. There's a lot of uh, emotion, you could say, that goes into it. And that leads me to the topic of today's conversation. Before I go on, this is strictly my opinions and nobody else's. I haven't really even consulted with the other creators that were there as part of this. I'm just here telling you how I personally feel and my experiences as an outside viewer um, about how things have gone. And second, this section is not going to be safe for work. I usually try to keep things clean over here on the content, but that we're gonna this is gonna be a little different so if you have anyone who's young around who's watching this or might over here and you don't want them to hear some harsh language this would be a good time to maybe turn the video off and come back later or maybe not come back at all because the rest of this is going to be a little harsh you still with me okay cool guys i hate to break this to you but no matter free cardboard or great onboarding tutorials or friendly you know thumbs up etc is gonna save us from the fact that a lot of people here berate the fucking living hell out of Universe's games for everything that they do. And I know that seems like kind of a wild take, but it is, trust me, it's not just me that feels this way. I'm gonna show you a clip from a little guy named Travis who works over at a tiny store called Millennium Games. For those of you that don't know, Millennium Games is one of the biggest, basically hobby shops, card shops, whatever term you wanna use, friendly game store in the USA and he carries a ton of space in the community. I'm, I was joking around about him being tiny. The guy is huge. Let's let that clip play. They have a community that's sort of a double-edged sword from my time spent with them. I think the community is, is one of the most amazing communities that I've ever seen in terms of embracing a new player that's looking to learn the game. They're absolutely fantastic about that. They're they are the first ones to hand somebody a deck, walk them through play lines, really get them on board, explain to them where the, where they need to spend on singles and different things like that. They're, they're absolutely awesome at that. And on the flip side of that, I've never seen, regardless of what the, regardless of what the announcement is that, that's come down from UVS Games or Power Entertainment about something that they're doing, whether it's something as much of as, as, a, as a tiny throwaway about a Red Vines promotion to card backs changing to adjustments in organized play and things like that, and the, the community, some members of the community just find a reason to just hammer it and ax grind it. And it's like every single decision that's made all the time is... It, it goes through this evisceration process that like the community is, I, I, I don't know why it happens as much as it does. Maybe it happens in other games and I just don't see it, but I'm in part, I'm part of a lot of those. Every single decision that's made, I don't think needs to have a scalpel attached to it and, and, and they need to be hammered on because when you come into the community and you're new and you're a fresh player and you're looking to get involved, and it feels like every single time that something happens, there's some level of a tectonic drama that goes on it makes those people look at other places to go. And now, if you're still here watching this, you probably fall under one of two categories. The first is you're watching this and you're going, well, I don't really talk this way to people. That's, you know, I, I don't get toxic. And if you're one of those people, man, that's awesome. Thank you. Like, we need more people like you. If you're in the second group going, man, fuck UVS games. I give these guys all the flack they deserve. Like, if I get heated or, you know, whatever, like, they just screw everything up. The rest of this video is for you. Let's talk about one of the most uh, recent major controversial moments in the game's history, which is the banning of Jose Nerono due to the Wish tournament. And to recap, Jose Nerono was a very strong competitive player and also one of the most well-liked and loved members of the community. He was a big part of Team Unfun Stuff. Um, he was a strong player in person, but once webcam became involved, he elevated to basically being invincible. I mean, the guy practically didn't drop individual games, let alone matches. In fact, it wasn't that uncommon for people to say that he was just getting a webcam power-up or buff because he was more comfortable playing at home than he was in person. 
It turns out that he actually did have a webcam buff, but it wasn't him being comfortable. The dude was just hard cheating. There's no nice way to put it. Eventually, he got caught and banned, as any cheater should, um, which raises the question of how did the community respond to the announcement that Jose Nerono had been banned for cheating? Were these ha people happy that a prolific cheater was banned? Were they um, upset and maybe feeling betrayed that a person like Jose, who was a major community member, had been cheating against them, including his own teammates? No, we instead we had people claiming that the, the company banned Jose out of spite. They pulled the trigger too early and didn't have evidence. They don't know what they're doing. I mean, there were a lot of posts about it. If you were in the community, I know you were there at the time. Um, the communities felt, at least from my perspective, felt entitled to the evidence that was used against Jose, which is wild, um, in my opinion. I don't think we're entitled to the evidence for something like that. And the idea that UBS Games, or any company for that matter, would just like ban one of their most popular competitive players and a front man for one of the biggest teams in their game on a whim is ridiculous. But I get it. Jose was a popular guy and a lot of people really liked him, so emotions were high. Fortunately for us, somebody in the community went digging through what had to be hours of footage of Jose playing games and actually found some pretty compelling evidence that he was cheating and basically manipulating the cards in his hand. I mean, he probably had like a set of cards off on the side of it, like on a table or a dresser or something. So we had proof found that the guy was in fact cheating. No argument left. Hopefully at this point, the community would be happy about what happened, right? I can't count the number of times that I saw people try to say, and I've included some pictures here, of them handling it poorly because they didn't communicate well, when the reality is most of the time in most games, and, and we're, not talking, we're not talking just card games here, we're talking like gaming as a medium, if you get banned for cheating, you get like a notification email, and that's usually it. You're not entitled to an explanation of like why, because you're actually cheating. And sometimes people get caught up in like mass ban waves and you can appeal it, but like by and large, like if, if you get hit for cheating, you're probably cheating. Um, so yeah, the, the community wasn't entitled to the evidence. UBS game doesn't have to tell us like the layout and the determination and thresholds for what they use. Like we're just not entitled to that information and it's ridiculous to think that they have to. And it was also ridiculous to think that they had to step in and like calm the community down because everybody was upset over something they were not entitled to. I know some people wanted UBS Games to come out and say that they should have contacted fucking Jose and been like, hey, you know, or uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm working that poorly. They should have said that they told the community, hey, no, we told Jose he, why he was gone because it was for cheating because I believe Jose was claiming that, you know, he hadn't been contacted. But this is honestly a lie. Jose is a cheater. And people have to consider, right? Like, universe, UBS Games cannot come out and say, hey, yeah, we contacted Jose Nerono and told him he was cheating in public because now effectively they're publicly accusing Jose of lying. The reason for that is if Jose claims he wasn't contacted and UBS Games comes out and says he was contacted, somebody here has to be lying. These are like mutually exclusive. So they're not gonna do that and they don't have to. Also, speaking of, no, I'm not sorry for not blurring the names out of here. These are all crops from public posts in our community page. Basically anybody could find if they were around at the time. Um, you know, these are these are public. You guys let these up, these are your public statements. You know, you can own it. I would own anything that I've ever said or posted. So yeah, anyways, moving on. Okay, maybe this was just like an isolated incident though, right? Jose was popular. And, you know, people get heated. You know, maybe this was like a single individual moment where the community was kind of out of pocket. Uh, guess not. The bottom line here is that we are a very passionate community and sometimes this is great. And again, it's part of why some people think we have the best community in universe, or uh, best community in any kind of card game. And there's a way that we could be, but sometimes this passion gets the best of us. And I want to be clear, I am not immune to this criticism. I have said and done things that are probably too heated, sometimes to people's faces. See, Luhan Wei has attended my locals before, and I've had some scathing remarks for the guy. I almost quit during League of Villains. You can see on my channel, there's like a giant gap of like months, um, like almost half a year, because the game sucked. I thought the game was terrible. I thought they didn't have any idea what the fuck they were doing, and I told Luhan that directly to his face. Um, and, They've made a lot of changes since then, so 
while I don't feel that way now, I would still stand by what I did back then. I mean, I was so mad, I threw away a sealed box of League of Villains when I was like downsizing. I was gonna do like a box giveaway and I just said fuck it and threw the fucking box away because I was burnt out. So believe me when I say, I know what it's like to get heated. I know what it's like to be like, hey, you're a dog shit company. Like, I've, I have been there, like, sometimes fairly, sometimes unfairly. And strictly speaking, the remarks haven't just been towards Luhan either. Hitch actually lives nearby and regularly attends my locals. He come to ha he came to hang out with us during uh, the Level Up Expo in Vegas. Like, there's a picture of us here at the hotel. The guy's great. We're close friends in real life. While I've personally never had much negative feedback for the guy other than that the symbol changes suck, which, sorry, homie, I like the old symbols better. I don't know what to tell you. He still had to witness me tear into Luhan before and others, and again, it's not, not always my proudest moment. It's a bad look when we do stuff like this. We as a community have to be better, because again, there's all these other areas that we're very strong in. But just like my boy Travis said, we push people away. We drive people off when they come in and every decision that UBS games make, good or bad, is treated as this like fucking massive like end of the world scenario with 35 different memes here and upset crazy angry people. They, like, it's, it's too much. It's too much. They're human, guys. They're going to make mistakes. And look, and I'm saying when they make bad changes, we should call them out on those bad changes. Like, I don't like that they got rid of webcam. I think webcam is a great tool for people who don't have the money to go out to like major regionals to at least play like in a level of competition. Or if they live too far away from like a store to have like a regular event. Like I miss weekly win webcam Wednesday. I never really played in it, but I watched it all the time. Like it was honestly one of the best parts of my week. Like I miss it. But that's why it's so important that we try to be at least a little respectful when they make mistakes. Because here's the thing, guys, believe it or not, they really do listen to us. Like, there's plenty of games out there where community feedback gets completely or totally ignored. Like, if you've been in any other gaming circles, I, I, I don't really need to give examples because they're almost any online game. It's very rare where community input gets like super, super seriously taken. And again, it's not like they listen to us on everything that we think. But they do give us positive feedback on a lot of things. That's why, for example, we have bigger symbols on our cards now. Or why they changed the keyword placements to, to match more, like, honestly, where the cards should have been. Or why regionals aren't being gate kept anymore because nobody liked that. Or why we no longer have mixed formats between draft and constructed because almost nobody liked that. Like, and these are just the recent examples. I mean, they've received a ton of feedback over the last couple of years and made changes. Like, that's a really big deal. We are blessed, we are fucking blessed to have a team that cares so much about this game and the IPs. Like seriously, I know some people in the community act like the, the team at UVS Games don't know what they're doing, but their creative team is second to none. They, you might personally feel like other games have better artwork, I think you're wrong. Um, but what I will say is there's no other team with the amount of resources that Universes has that has artwork this good. Like, Bandai games, bigger than ours. Magic, much bigger than us. Pokemon, much bigger than us. Like, they have way more money and way more people. Our team is a small team of very committed people. Zoe and Hitch, like, absolutely have blown out of the park. Like, I know people didn't like the card frames when they came out. And I know, and I said it earlier, right? I don't like the symbol changes. But goddamn, the cards look so much better now, guys. I don't even think, like... It's up for debate at this stage. It'd be, it'd be tough for me to take you seriously if you really genuinely thought like set one MHA like packs and cards looked better than like girl power. I, I don't know if I could take you seriously. And the same feedback goes for like Bill Stark and Paul and Tim Friedlieb. Like these guys love this game. They're trying their absolute best and they're making really good moves. Um, we're getting like a digital tutorial client that at the time of this recording, I don't know if they've said it publicly. It might've just been announced but it's like on Dice, which is a common app for like board game tutorials and some other card games. So it's a good way to help people learn. You know, they're trying to make um, demos easier with these demo decks for Attack on Titan and uh, Hercules and Sun Wukong, which I think the Hercules Sun Wukong is a little goofy. I think the Attack on Titan choice is way better. There's some changes that are coming in Attack on Titan that I can't talk about that I wish that I could. 
Um, but again, I think overall they're better for the game. Like these people are trying their damnedest. They want universes to be the number one card game. And I know we want universes to be the number one card game. We often say that it is. And that means we need to have the number one community to go with it. We react to things too quickly and too negatively. And again, I do it sometimes too. I also need to try to be better and I'm going to do my part. Cue Starship Troopers memes. But if you feel like this might apply to you even a little bit, take it to heart. Try to be better. When we see the upcoming changes for Attack on Titan, don't immediately respond. You know, think it over. Maybe, depending on, you know, what the changes is, play it around with a little bit first. See how it feels and then give some feedback instead of immediately acting like it's the worst decision ever made. The bottom line is I want this to be the best community period for any card game and honestly almost any game and I think we ace it on a lot of other fronts and it's just this one area we need to work on as a team um, and I guarantee you if we get this together when we get all these Attack on Titan fans they're going to come for the IP and they're going to stay for you and I and I think that's the biggest biggest takeaway that I've had for the summit is that the future for universes is bright, but we can make it even brighter. Anyways, if you made it this far, consider liking and subscribing. Uh, I'm going to be covering the new Godzilla Challenger decks. They gave me a copy of each of them. I'm really excited to crack those open. I'll probably open those tomorrow and have them up sometime this weekend, at least as of this recording. Um, once again, thank you for Into the Chamber, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.